Does the umbrella for democratic change have what it takes to challenge the one-party dominance in Botswana? Are the 2014 Botswana elections likely to be free and fair? What change is the UDC likely to effect should they win the 2014 elections? Are the days of the Botswana Democratic Party in power numbered? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tseyedu. 2014 is likely to mark a watershed in the politics of the tiny southern African country, the Republic of Botswana. Since its independence from Britain on 30th September 1966, the politics of the country have been synonymous with the Botswana Democratic Party, BDP. Forty years later, the umbrella for democratic change, a measure of Botswana's three major opposition parties, is set to take over power after the elections due to uh, take place on the 24th of October. My guest in studio today, Mr. Duma Boko, the president of the umbrella for democratic change. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me <clears throat> on this great show. Now... Here is a coalition of three opposition parties. What brought about this uh, measure which has not existed in the past? Well, what brought it about was a yearning that has always existed in time. Mm. The Botswana National Front, one of the opposition parties which now forms part of the umbrella, mm. has always made efforts to unite. In fact, it was established to try and bring about unity of all the opposition parties in Botswana. Yes. Those efforts were not successful for many reasons. Uh, those efforts were tried even prior to the last elections in 2009. Okay. We realized, those of us on the, in, the, in the younger generation, that, that uh, in order to effectively challenge the ruling Botswana Democratic Party, Yes. And move the country to a truly democratic dispensation. Mm. We needed to answer this basic question of ensuring that the opposition parties do not split votes. They speak in one formidable voice. They then present a credible alternative in answer to the slogan of the ruling party, which has always said there's no alternative. Okay. Now we say... Having brought the three main opposition parties together, the Botswana National Front, the Botswana Movement for Democracy, and the Botswana People's Party, yes. under the rubric of the umbrella for democratic change, mm. we have resolved this long-pending historical problem. Okay. We now have a formidable opposition, okay. formidable in terms of the vast array of talent and leadership that it presents, and formidable in terms of the unity that it has now been able to forge, okay. and also formidable in, in terms of the, the enthusiasm, the faith and confidence that it has now been able to generate among the people of Botswana. What are your views about the sitting president? My views <laughs> about him, uh, he has uh, presided over an alarming depreciation of our democracy. He has destroyed most of the institutions that would otherwise sustain and carry our democracy forward. He has, in fact, in sum and substance, reduced our democracy into a monocracy. It's about him and his cronies. This is what we want to put an end to. Now, what makes you think that you can defeat a 40-plus-year-old uh, administration? The answer lies in the question itself, in the sense that uh, 40 years down the line, the, this particular government, this regime, has now run its full course. It has run out of ideas. It is on a terrible decline, and it threatens to take the country down that slippery slope with it. But we want to stop that. The, the main aim of this unity uh, amongst opposition parties is to unseat him. Am I correct? That's the starting point. Right. That's not the end of, 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 of 
Right. Of now, the journey. Okay. Yes. You have an example next door to South Africa in Lesotho. Yes. Where a coalition was created to unseat the sitting prime minister. Indeed, it happened, but it couldn't be sustained. Yes. The Lesotho coalition is somewhat different from ours. How <clears throat> so? Ours is a coalition formed not for the purpose simply of taking over power. It's a coalition that has blended together. Yeah, but now, if the, that was the case, you would have formed one party. Yes. There's, there's a very good reason why that route could not be taken immediately. Mm. The reason is when you have three or more political parties mm. with their diverse political cultures, yes. if you're going to bring them together, you, you would need to work to harmonize the programs, the values, and the cultures of these political parties. Okay. Are you behind the recent um, protests in Botswana? Which protests? Well, the unrest that has been uh, well, ongoing. No, no. We, we are not behind any protests. We were part of the public sector worker strike mm. when we when the workers of Botswana went on strike demanding their dues, demanding rights uh, to have their salaries reviewed and increased, which had not been increased over a long period of time, mm. demanding a review of their working conditions okay. in all the various sectors. So what, what you were saying is... They came, they, they went on strike because the government wouldn't listen. Mm. We came on board to support. You are politicians. Why should we believe you? I mean, what, what, is, uh, what is it that you're bringing to the table? Yeah. I mean, if you take uh, over government tomorrow, are you, going to, uh, are you telling us that you're going to increase their salaries? Definitely. For, for a very simple reason. One, that uh, these salaries haven't been increased over a long period of time, mm. which is now well over five years. Okay. The purchasing power of mm. these employees has been eroded mm. by so many factors over time. Okay. It is imperative that their salaries are increased. Okay. But and, you more are, you, and you are also we, going on record? Yes, I'm going that, on record. That because you, it is important for a leader to go on record mm. so that uh, when you fail to deliver, the people can hold you to account. Okay. That is the first thing. The second thing, and it's very critical for us, is that in our manifesto, mm. in our program, we've okay. flagged something very, very critical. I want, you, I want to give you an, uh, an opportunity to actually talk about the manifesto, the pillars, yes. as you call them, yes. right? But I want us to take a break first. Thank you very much. All right. We're going to take a quick break. Please don't go away. We'll return shortly. economic capital, a unique art collection is on display. Titled Yesterday's Memory, Tomorrow's Memory. We are trying to preserve this heritage despite many things that have changed in the designing, embroidery and the model. If I'm telling you, you don't like it, I call it defeat. Join Musam Kalipi on Afro Show Biz every Saturday at 19.30 CAT. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. My guest today, Duma Boko, the president of the Umbrella for Democratic Change in Botswana. Now, Mr. Boko, Embrace Change is your slogan. Yes, it is. Why did you come up with Embrace Change? Is it because you have realized that the people of Botswana have not wanted change in the past 40 years? They, had, they have wanted change. Now, why didn't they, they have, get it? They have not been offered change. They have not been offered any credible means of effecting change. We believe now, mm. with the umbrella for democratic change, we are presenting them with an opportunity that they have yearned for, okay. but they've never really quite been given. Mm. We're giving them that opportunity. 
we're giving them the change that uh, they, they have always wanted and we're asking them to embrace it. Do you think you've got what it takes to take on the uh, Rekham? Yes, absolutely, without any doubt. We have put together a team mm. of very talented, able leaders with well-known track records. Mm. We have put together a campaign manifesto that speaks to the desperate needs of the majority of our people. But you're also up against a resourced um, yes, political party. Yes, indeed. We appreciate that. Mm. We now are able to say, with all the resources that the ruling party can marshal, mm. they will not be able to defeat the change that we are bringing. This but topic. there's also talk that you are getting funding from Zimbabwe. Well, that is absolutely untrue. There's no funding we're getting from Zimbabwe. Where are you getting um, funding from? We mobilize our resources from our membership. But we, didn't you say you represent the poor? We represent the poor. Where do the poor get money to uh, fund a campaign have... that would challenge a 40-year-old <laughs> uh, sitting administration? The interesting thing about the umbrella for democratic change, and it's been an amazing experience for me, mm. is that uh, these days, and it's been like this for quite some time now, yeah. I get accosted by ordinary people mm -hmm. who appreciate the work that we've done as the umbrella for democratic change and who are giving willingly, freely of their limited resources without even having been, been, been requested to do so. Okay. So we are receiving support, financial, moral, and uh, personnel support from our people. So and if, it's, 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 it's amazing. Is that the word that you are willing to stick by? Yes, I am. And if we were to produce evidence that you are getting funding from elsewhere? Well, if, there, there would be no such evidence. Okay. There would be no such. Um, we, 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 we deal in, in facts and reality. We have, obviously, and, and, and this is also very important, mm -hmm. in the course of interacting with others, you create and forge certain relationships. That's some where your, I wanted you to get Some of your to friends actually. might throw in a dollar here, mm -hmm. uh, $10 there, which is not any different from what our ordinary people are throwing. So we, if you know anybody who's willing to do that and do it perhaps on a bigger scale than we've, we've, we've been blessed with, mm -hmm. we would be much uh, obliged to receive. The pillars... <clears throat> the learning beehive, yes. you say, a learning, schooling, and skill development system that nurtures well-rounded, creative, and productive children, youth, and adults empowered to create opportunities for themselves and their communities. I've spent, um, you know, some time in Botswana, and I cannot agree more that indeed there's a need um, to look after children, youth, and uh, empower some adults. Yes. We have an interesting scenario in Botswana, and the, the recent experiences in the education sector in particular mm. reveal a number of discrepancies. Mm. Firstly, we have experienced a very alarming failure rate in the public schools. Mm. We have also seen a mismatch between whatever little skills are available and generated by the education system mm -hmm. and what the labor market requires. Mm -hmm. We have a situation where in relation to very basic work and skills like artisans, electricians, bricklayers, we receive a lot of that much needed skill from, from neighboring countries. Okay. We want to have our own people skilled in these areas okay. because then they can earn a living. That is one. The second is in terms of the basic education, the, the primary schools, if you go around and, and you, can, you can compare, if you go to the private schools, you look at the facilities mm -hmm. that the private schools have and you look at what is offered in the, in the, in the public schools, yes. there's, there's a vast difference. Mm. There are no libraries. Not a, a single public primary school has a library. Okay. And we want to have these schools equipped sufficiently to compete with the very best in the world. Not mm -hmm. just the private schools in the country, but the very best schools in the world. Right. So that we produce the kind of learner that our, our country needs. A clean and effective government. You believe that the current government is corrupt? Yes, it is corrupt. Do you yeah. have evidence? We have mountains of evidence. Really. What have they done? We... We'll start with one, which is a critical point. To deal with corruption in Botswana, mm. we need to address 
the fact that corruption has become institutionalized. Yeah, but they are the same. Uh, I mean, they would be the first to say, we are the only country um, that has a law that deals with corruption in particular. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is very easy to enact a law that fails to deal with the core problems mm. in order to circumvent exactly what you should be addressing. We have the, the act, which is called the... Um, we, we in fact, starting with, 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 with an institution called the Directorate on Corruption yes. and Economic Crime. And we have an act yes. that deals with corruption and economic crime. The starting point is the institution that enforces this law mm. must be properly resourced and capacitated to deal with the challenges that are attendant upon the issue of corruption. Yes. We have a very weak, very, very weak to almost non-effectual directorate on corruption and economic crime. Who's stealing the money? At this point, on the evidence we have, it is the director of intelligence and security who has in fact been questioned by the Directorate on Corruption and Economic Crime. As far back as over two years ago, they were investigating him. Mm. They, are, they have been ready to prosecute him, but nothing has happened. We've put pressure on them to ask them, firstly, why is this man still holding this it's position? It's a very key position. Very key position, mm. which he can use and we believe does use to circumvent, to sabotage the process which would bring him to justice. Why is he still there? Mm. You've got now to link the fact of his being there with the highest office in the land, which is the office of the president, because the director of intelligence reports directly to the president. Yes. There's no other oversight body that can call him to order. It is only the president. And when the only person in a whole repertory of institutions the only person who could put an end to this man holding office, at least until he has cleared his name, if he's able to do so, doesn't do so. Then you must, without any equivocation, conclude that there must be complicity in this corruption from the highest office in the land. We're going to talk about the harming economy for prosperity and this uh, concept of no one is left out and secure and fulfilled families. Only after the break, we're going to take a quick break. Please don't go away. Since its inception, the city of Durban has sent a group of designers on an internship program in Milan, the fashion capital of the world. The origins of belly dancing are unclear, but its history in Egypt goes back to the 18th and 19th centuries where dancers were known as wawazi. Inala's original music is composed and performed by Ladysmith Black Mambazo. The multiple Grammy Award winning South African Isitata Mia group, led by Joseph Shabalala and Ella Spira. Inala blends the rhythms and harmonies of native musical roots with live percussion, piano and strings. Join Musam Khalifi on Afro Show Biz every Saturday at 19.30 CAT. In Parliament, Higher Education and Training Minister Bladen Zimande has conceded that the bursary scheme is not enough to meet the growing demand from students. Funding for universities is not enough. We will be open about that. We will continue to ask for more from government as a department. We've always said that the NASFAS budget must be 16 billion rand and that uh, no qualifying student must be prevented from studying just because they cannot afford to do so. There's been concern about citrus exports to Europe and investment contracts. There are more opportunities for us to sell sugar, wine, ethanol, some fruit products than we had before and that uh, that could create jobs. That's Business News, weekdays at 6 p.m. on SABC News.
Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. Our guest in studio, Duma Boko, is the president of the Umbrella for Democratic Change in Botswana. Now, Mr. Boko, the harming economy for prosperity, you say you want to bring about a growing, resilient, and diversified economy that emanates from Botswana's heritage and self-reliance and their inherent determination to succeed and create job opportunities for all your people, young, old, urban, and rural. Absolutely. We have uh, an economy that is reliant, overly reliant, on, on, the, on, on the diamond, diamond yeah. um, sector. Mm. An economy that is not diversified. The result of that is that there's massive unemployment, especially youth unemployment mm. in the country. This is because in critical part, mm. we, are, we have been content under the leadership of the, of the Botswana Democratic Party. They have been content to cut away the ore in the raw mm -hmm. without unlocking its value and creating jobs in Botswana mm -hmm. and creating the attendant skills to perform those jobs. They have been content to just sell off the diamonds without having been processed. So we want to change this, this scenario first. We want to ensure a bigger, a bigger stake for our people in, in the economy of their country. Mm. We want a diversified economy, an economy that leverages from the diamond, from the mineral sector, and creates downstream industries in which our people are active. Okay. This is what we want to do, and it's something that we believe should have been done a long time ago. No one is left out. Talk to us about this. When you diversify the economy, you create jobs, which enable our people to eke out a meaningful, decent living. Yes. They are able to get themselves decent, decent shelter. Mm. They are able to put their children through school, working together with the government. They are able to sustain themselves without being dependent on, on government or anybody else. Okay. So we want an economy, we want an environment that empowers the people and is not, does not exclude does not exclude even the, the very marginalized people like the Basara, the Bushmen. Yes. Um, those are the most marginalized. Certain programs have been created which have further exacerbated their marginalization. We want to have those brought on board. Okay. And, and this is what the Umbrella for Democratic Change seeks to do. Secure and fulfilled families, an environment in which individuals and families adhere to the principles of Butu uh, Terisanyo and Karisanyo and live, in, uh, or live with dignity. Secure families. The family is a very important institution in society. Yes. It needs to be housed properly, the family. Yes. It needs to be fed properly. It needs to be clothed properly. It needs to be secure. Our people need to go to sleep without fearing that the directorate of intelligence will break into their houses because they want to sniff for this or that information, which is what is happening now. We want our people to feel safe. We want our people to feel secure. We want the institutions, the organs of state to have, to command the respect and trust of the ordinary people, something that is painfully missing. Okay. So we want this. We want a free society. We want a secure Society. We want an informed society where journalists can write, can speak, can inform mm -hmm. without fearing that the next day they will be picked up by the Directorate on Intelligence and imprisoned. Okay. Talking about imprisonment, if you take power, are you going to kill people? Death penalty, that is. I have come out on record, and this is because of my track record as a human rights activist and spoken against the death penalty. One of the first things that we would do when we take over mm. is to impose a moratorium on the death penalty mm. while we look into abolishing it. And that is something that we are prepared to go on record and face the people of Botswana and say to them, we will not be implementing the death penalty going forward. But have they complained that it's not working? Yes, they do. We, we know that it is not working. We know that... Uh, is it not a deterrent? It, it, it is not a deterrent at all. Mm. It is not a deterrent at all. In fact, it dehumanizes society and cheapens life 
which is why it, it, it does not work. But I'll tell you something um, that a lot of people I know from, whether it be from South Africa or any other country, they would say, you know what? You're not going to play uh, you know, in Botswana because they'll kill you. And therefore, they don't go and mess around there. Well, they do. Uh, you see, the, the, the assumption is that a lot of the crimes that are committed are planned by people who have focused on what the outcome is mm. going to be. Mm. A lot of the crimes, and this is, there's been a huge debate in the country where people have said a description in relation to uh, crimes that have been described as crimes of passion. Yes. Where lovers kill, it, yes. kill other, their, 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 yeah, their the spouses and yeah. partners. They say that is, that is not a correct description. It is, in fact, a correct dis description. That it's a crime committed in the heat of passion. And when it is in the heat of that passion, there's no time absolutely to reflect on what will or will not happen. So the, death, the presence of the death penalty or its retention does not provide any deterrence in those regards. Okay. Yes. You so believe, we will abolish the death penalty. Okay. That's, that's, that's a matter of fact. You believe that Homoli Mamtualedi was killed? Yes. We do. Why? Government came out and said there's no evidence. Yes. You see, it is interesting, firstly, that government would rush to, uh, to declare when investigations into a matter of that seriousness take a very long time. The, an accident is not investigated by a forensic pathologist. What the forensic pathologist does is to examine a body yes. and indicate what injuries he found on that body. Okay. He is not investigating how these injuries came about. Mm. We need another specialist to carry out that investigation. And one, the government of Botswana will not tell you what s skills and expertise it deployed in that investigation. Okay. Because we know they do not have anybody of, 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 of any such capability. We know, we've dealt with them, they've investigated cases, and all their investigations have resulted in shoddy work in, in, in relation to which people are acquitted when they go to the courts. We don't want that kind of situation in relation to the death of our leader. Duma Gideon Boko, let me thank you for the thank time. Thank you very much. Are the elections going to be free and fair? The elections, it's, it's, uh, the jury is still out. Okay. The jury is still out. And we, am I talking, not, am I talking here to the future president of Most Bukla? likely. We believe that on the 25th of October we'll take over. Okay. Thank you very All much. All the best. Thank you very much. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guest and to you for watching the show. Welcome your feedback by email. Question time at sabc.co.za. Our Twitter handle at question time24. From me and the crew, have yourself a wonderful time. Goodbye.